Stop trying to come up with chord progressions. Today I want to show you just a couple of concepts that we can use to transform the way we think about chord progressions and turn something like this into this. Everyone wants a shortcut to better chord progressions. Well, too bad, because this isn't about a new chord generator that will magically do it for you, or an ad for MIDI chord packs. And this is super good for you, especially if you like struggle with making melodies, chords, stuff like that. Because those exist, apparently. I'm just going to show you an actual proven method that I use in my own music. That's pretty old, actually. But it's also still very, very effective, and there's probably a reason that it stood the test of time. And if you would like to make music that stands out from the crowd today, you might find it kind of interesting. A few months ago, I wrote a free ebook containing just some practical tips on composition that I've used for a lot of years now. And to my surprise, thousands of people downloaded it. In the section of this guide that talked about harmony and chord progressions, I mentioned something along the lines of think horizontally, not vertically. And then later it occurred to me that not everyone might understand what that meant because some people reached out and said that they didn't understand what that meant. So let's dig a little deeper into what that means and how to actually do it. I know you're here for quick chord progression tips, not even the MIDI chord pack guys use, but before we get there, let's talk very briefly about melody. Now, stay with me, it ties in, I promise. I'm not gonna go into how to write a melody today because I already did that last week. But there are some characteristics of strong melodies that we can directly apply to our chord progressions. Writing melodies that are singable almost always leads to melodies that are more memorable. But what actually makes a melody singable? Well, to oversimplify for the sake of this demonstration, linear, stepwise motion, and smaller intervals. If you've ever taken a piano lesson or had the privilege of listening to a student practice, you've probably heard something like this. You might notice, though, if we look at the score, that these don't look like our standard snowman triads. In fact, if we were to play this progression in that way, it would look and sound like this. Notice how unnatural that looks and sounds, and how we're kind of leaping and jumping all over the place but by using inversions, which just means that we're taking all the same notes of that chord and rearranging them a bit, each of the three notes of the progression seem to go on their own linear melodic journey. So if we were singing each part, it would feel more natural to us. It's almost like we're thinking of a bunch of horizontal lines instead of a series of vertical chords. So let's start by not really thinking of chords in isolation. It is called a chord progression, after all, and that means that no chord exists by itself, and also that those chord tier ranking charts that I've seen on Twitter lately really make no sense at all. So we've already seen that through redistributing our notes slightly, inversions, they start to take on the characteristics of a group of melodies rather than just a clump of notes. This is an older concept because it's the way that choirs work. or ensembles like a string quartet, for example. Each individual player or singer is responsible for their own melodic line, and then when you put all of those together, it forms the vertical chord. I have before me a synthesizer. and I'm gonna use it to write something in this sort of horizontal style. In fact, I'm gonna start with just three voices. Now I could do something simple like this. And because the patch is interesting and the sound design is pretty cool, maybe I could get away with that. Or I could make the part writing itself more interesting 
doing something like this. Notice how it's mostly stepwise motion, and not only that, we have contrary motion, in other words, the parts are moving in opposite directions, between the soprano and the bass. We mentioned that a singable melody tends to have a lot of stepwise motion, or smaller intervals, but that doesn't mean that we don't have any leaps whatsoever. It means we're saving the leaps for moments of emphasis. And this serves as a kind of plot twist in our musical narrative. Thanks, Melodies. We'll be taking that one to use in our chord progressions as well. The second time I do that, I'm going to make it a little bit more interesting by adding a plot twist, or a leap. So not only does this method make our progressions more interesting, it also gives us a sense of line independence, which means we have more options with each of the lines themselves, since they are their own independent melody. I could play it in just two parts at a time. Or, I could even record this as like a synth quartet. In other words, kind of like a string quartet, but with, well, you get the idea. I think I want a grungier bass on this. No, I already hate it. I need a conductor. We still have inner voices to record, but I have to set up my camera so that you can see that. Now, I know what you may be thinking. I don't just write ambient synth music. What if I wanted to do something a little bit more energetic? I don't really understand why you would want to do such a thing. But if you did, I actually think that these same methods, thinking about chord progressions in this way, can really help any style of music, any genre. Let's see if I can whip up something real quick to pull that off. What if we did like an ARP with that? Because you know, the thing about ARPs is they're chords. <laughs> they're just broken chords instead of block chords, and since we're thinking of things kind of horizontally and linearly anyway, let's try it. You know, I'm actually gonna record just a... A layer of grungy overdriven just to tuck away in the background. Next, we need a really snappy bass part. I gotta stand up for this one, sorry. Just 
going to put four on the floor. And let's do some sort of weird pattern, like maybe seven steps, like so. So in my attempt to answer the question definitively, yeah, but can it slap? Here's this thing. So I think this can be used in multiple applications regardless of what style or genre you write in, and it's going to make your work stand out because people typically aren't thinking about chord progressions in this way anymore. We stole a lot of these techniques that we use today from melody writing, and if you'd like to learn more about what makes a melody memorable and how to make your own melodies more memorable, you can click on this tiny rectangle right here. <laughs>